The H1B guy here, and today, the H1B guy news for the week ending September 3rd, 2021. Today, I'll cover EB5 and disarray, green card backlog reform requested to be included in budget reconciliation, and USCIS goes on record about green card processing numbers. But before we get started, I'd like to ask you, if you haven't already, to please subscribe to the H1B Guy channel here on YouTube and like this video so that I can continue to produce more content like this for you. I also wanted to mention the H1B Guy offers a variety of consulting services. I help businesses and individuals solve complex work authorization issues in the recruitment process while bringing awareness to employment-based immigration benefits. If I can help you, please reach out. I'd love to hear how. And you can book an appointment directly with me via the h1bguy.com. Today's news is brought to you by recruiternetworks.com, by Path to Canada, and by perm-ads.com. Now, the news. Well, it was definitely a bit of a slow news week as we continue to inch closer to the September 15th deadline for what will and will not be included in the budget reconciliation. But here are the stories that interested me most this week. August 30th, 2021, written by Andy Simotiuk for Forbes, titled USCIS Appeal Spark Speculation About the EB-5 Foreign Investor Program. Quote, at the last moment, USCIS filed an appeal against the decision in the Bering Regional Center lawsuit dealing with U.S. EB-5 Investor Immigration Program. The appeal deals with a preliminary injunction attained by the Bering Regional Center against the Department of Homeland Security's EB-5 modernization rule that went into effect on November 21, 2019. Of most significance regarding the appeal was the fact that it did not include a motion for stay of the Beiring decision, which implied that USCIS will continue to accept petitions under the EB-5 Direct Investment Program with a lower amount of $500,000. At the moment, the EB-5 program is largely in disarray. There is growing congressional recognition about the need to secure the investment of those who have invested in the EB-5 program to date, no matter what may happen in regard to extending the regional center program. You know, here we are yet again with more confusion and delays from USCIS. I've covered EB-5 a little bit in terms of investor visa options in the past, uh, specifically around Bitcoin, uh, but the confusion here lies with direct investment versus regional center investments. While USCIS filed a motion against EB-5, it only appears to be against the regional center option and not the lowering of the total investment required of 500000 This is really an interesting play, and I believe it has more to do with the flow of money. Direct investment requires capital up front, while regional center is basically a loan that has to be paid off over time. I don't anticipate an increase to the total investment requirements, uh, but I definitely will continue to monitor this situation with this motion. On August 31st, 2021, in a news release from Representative Raja Krishna Amurthy, uh, titled Representatives Krishna Murthy, Manning Ross lead coalition of 40 colleagues in letter to congressional leadership calling for the ending of employment based green card backlog and reconciliation package. Quote, requesting that the budget reconciliation package provide relief to 1.2 million individuals stuck in the employment based green card backlog, strengthen our economy in the process. In order to fully unlock the economic potential of high skilled immigrants, a pathway to lawful permanent residence must be cleared and the system must be reformed. Reforming this immigration system will be especially helpful to the United States and its economy and workforce continues to recover from the pandemic. Failure to provide a path to lawful permanent residence for 1.2 million people in the employment-based green card backlog, most of whom are H-1B visa holders, would be a tad amount to staging an economic recovery with one hand tied behind our back, the representatives wrote. Permanently relegating H-1B holders to non-immigrant status while China, Russia, and other major powers are ascendant on the world stage and hungry to become home to the innovators of the 21st century is simply nonsensical. 
This can and must be addressed in the budget reconciliation package under negotiation. You know, the voices continue to get louder in Congress for relief for those stuck in the green card backlog. Um, we can go back to, you know, the Fairness for High Schooled Immigrants Act as well as the, the current Eagle Act. Um, but this tells me that advocacy efforts are working. Uh, but are they too late for this year is a question that I think needs to be asked. But the bigger question is, can enough support be found in the Senate in order for it to be included in the budget reconciliation? My answer is no. I'd be completely shocked if language with something along the lines of addressing the green card backlog was included in this year's budget reconciliation. On September 1st, 2021, written by Ellen M. Gilmer for Bloomberg Government, titled Green Cards Set to Go to Waste as Delays Persist, U.S. Concedes. Quote, some employment-based visas are set to go to waste at the end of September, U.S. officials say, painting a bleak picture of the government's ability to smooth legal immigration and address perennial backlogs and resource constraints. We do expect to have some visas go unused. It's not a surprise. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services Acting Deputy Director Tracy Renaud said at a court hearing Wednesday, the projected 180,000 green card applications processed this fiscal year still exceeds several recent years levels, Renaud said, but it falls short of those available. She didn't specify how many visas would go to waste, but legal filings indicate the number will be around 80,000. The federal court in Maryland, where USCIS has its headquarters, is wrangling around 150 cases that seek to force federal officials to process various types of visa applications faster. Uh, Judge Peter Masit ordered USCIS leaders to appear Wednesday so he could get a clearer picture of the backlog. Several plaintiff's attorneys attempted to interject at various points of the hearing, but Masit rebuffed them, saying he only wanted to get a status update from the government. I covered when Chakrabadi v. USCIS was filed during the H-1B Guy News for the week ending August 6, 2021. As I said, it was apparent to me that this lawsuit was imminent and seemed to be the only way that immigrants' rights are going to be upheld as it relates to wastage. The fact that the judge did not want to hear from any plaintiffs, only USCIS, is also very telling to me. The estimated 80,000 versus, if we go back to what Charlie Oppenheim sh shared a, a couple of episodes ago in his chats with Charlie, where he was estimating that it could be up to 100,000, is good to hear that we are reducing that number. Considering that USCIS is estimating to process 180,000 employment-based green cards for fiscal year 2021, doesn't really give me a good feeling about a favorable ruling for plaintiffs in this lawsuit. The facts are, this is a historical total number of employment-based green cards that will be processed by USCIS, regardless of this being an unprecedented annual allotment for fiscal year 2021. While I continue to hope that there is relief and reform, uh, I think that we will continue to see a slowing down of the advanced forward movement in the upcoming uh, visa bulletins for at least October and November as the Department of State looks to correct and slow down some of that advanced movement that we've seen because of USCIS's inability to process more than, in this case, 180,000 employment-based green cards. For the full post on the H-1B Guy News for the week ending September 3rd, 2021, please check out the H-1BGuy.com. And a reminder that today's news was brought to you by RecruiterNetworks.com, the smart solution for digital perm ads and local job postings since 2001. This national job board network provides recruitment websites to 1,024 major U.S. metro areas. Each local job board has its own portal and is a low-cost resource for immigration recruitment ads and local job postings for all industries and professions with a flat price of $225 per ad or $1,000 per month, regardless of which city you choose. RecruiterNetworks.com. Tell them the H-1B guy sent you. And by Path to Canada. Path to Canada provides an ideal plan B for high-skilled immigrants currently located in the U.S. whose status may be uncertain. If you're facing an H-1B denial or OPT expiration, don't get caught off guard. Make sure you have a plan B and Path to Canada is your answer. They will gladly help you navigate the process. And if you're interested in finding out more, please be sure to use the link in the video description below.
and by perm-ads.com. The industry leader in providing a seamless experience for employers and immigration attorneys navigating the complex PERM recruitment ad phase of the labor certification process. If you want to reduce your costs and overhead associated with PERM labor certification recruitment advertising, please let PERM-ADS.com help you. Just wanted to ask you again to please like this video subscribe to the h1b guy channel here on youtube and click the bell for notifications so that you're notified anytime we post new content here to this channel if you've made it this far i just want to say thank you for taking the time to watch my video i really appreciate your support the h1b guy your global source for all things h1b